We are looking to demonstrate Charles' law, which states that the volume of an ideal gas at constant pressure is directly proportional to its temperature with an accurate interactive method. When we started this project, we knew of other demonstrations that utilize balloons to demonstrate Charles' law. Our motivation for using bubbles is that they have less elastic properties than balloons and that their volume is easier to approximate. As a result, bubbles behave more like an ideal gas and are easier to take measurements and calculations with. The bubbles combine the accuracy demonstrated in the piston cylinder assembly we used in lab 2 with the fun and interactive qualities of the balloon demonstration. The ideal gas law provides an accurate approximation of the behavior of many gases under many conditions. Charles's law is one of the laws that makes up the ideal gas laws. Jacques Alexandre César Charles was a French inventor, scientist, and mathematician. He derived the direct relationship between temperature and volume of an ideal gas in the 1780s. Real life applications of Charles's law can be found in hot air balloons, tire pressures, undenting ping pong balls, or deflated basketballs left in the cold. Our bubble solution was created from a mixture of distilled water, dish soap, and glycerin, a compound that is used as a sweetener in the food industry. This allows for long lasting durable bubbles. Here you can see an initial test of our bubble solution. The technique, the skill, the focus. My goodness, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Our assumptions include that the air pressure of the room is equal to atmospheric pressure and that the pressure reading remains constant throughout the experiment. That the volume of air in the cylinder is kept constant at a steady state before heating. That the temperature of the air throughout the cylinder is relatively constant. That the radius of the bubble is the same as that of the glass cylinder. And that the volume of the bubble is approximated as half of an oblate ellipsoid, which is modeled by the equation V equals 2 thirds pi r squared times height. We used the LabQuest, a Vermeer temperature sensor, and a pressure sensor to record the experimental data in Water Pro. The container of hot water acted as our thermal reservoir to heat up and expand the bubble. We used a container of ice water as our cold reservoir to accelerate the cooling process of the cylinder between trials. As the temperature of the air inside the glass decreases, the volume decreases proportionally. In earlier attempts, we used an Erlenmeyer flask to create the bubbles. We decided to use a glass cylinder instead because it was easier to approximate the volume of the bubbles. Before recording our results, we tested other methods to raise the temperature of the air. Here, we attempted to use a heat gun, but the heat was not evenly distributed throughout the cylinder. As seen in this video, the pressure remains constant both before and after the heating process has occurred. Since the bubble was in the shape of an a blade ellipsoid, we measured the maximum height of the bubble when the temperature stabilized and approximated the volume using formulas for a hemisphere. The temperature and pressure of the air in the glass cylinder were measured before and after the heating process occurred. Using these temperatures, as well as the calculated initial volume of the cylinder, we calculated the expected change in the volume of the air inside. The expected change in volume is physically represented by the volume of the expanded bubble. If I The results show that bubbles are an accurate way of demonstrating Charles's law. The data shows two sets of trials, one where the temperature reading was taken with the sensor in contact with the glass, and one where the air within the cylinder was measured. Both sets have high accuracy, as shown by the low percent errors. However, the glass temperature measurements are clearly more accurate than the air temperature measurements. A study conducted at Purdue University found that balloons demonstrated Charles's law within a 4% accuracy. Our data shows that bubbles are a viable alternative to balloons. The trials during which the glass temperature was measured suggest that bubbles could even be more accurate. 
It is evident that for future experiments we should refine the temperature measuring process. The temperature of the air throughout the cylinder was not constant. A mixing mechanism or a longer time in the hot reservoir allowing for equilibrium to be achieved could improve our data. For future analysis, a better approximation of the volume of the bubble would be acquired by using optics. We would measure the height of the shadow of the bubble on a sheet of film, and then use optics formulas to calculate the height of the bubble for volume measurements. Bubbles are not only beautiful and fun to play with, they can also be useful thermodynamics tools. In this case, as a means of validating thermodynamic laws. I'm Z Chen. I approve this thermodynamic message. A huge shout out to Professor Chen and Rana White for the guidance and contributions to make this demonstration possible. Yeah.